Well, hello to my kindergarten and first grade artists and every artist that is joining me for this video. This is your art teacher, Mrs. P, Mrs. Pendleton, back on YouTube just to say hello. Hope you and your families are doing well and taking care of each other. Just to let you know that I love you and I miss you. And if you're not one of my students, please know that your teachers love and miss you too. And we hope that you're well and we cannot wait to see you guys again. I'm so excited that you have been being extra creative. Thank you to all the students and artists that have been sending me your work or have been sending me messages in our team's channel or in other ways. I really appreciate it and I'm so excited that we get a chance to still be creative together. So our next project that we're gonna be working on this week, we're gonna start with a drawing. Last week we talked about drawing the body. We talked about drawing self-portraits, pictures of ourselves. And we talked about how we can learn use certain shapes, geometric shapes like circles and rectangles, triangles, squares, and things like that, ovals too, to help represent parts of the body. Today, we are going to be working on using a different type of shape called freeform shapes. Freeform shapes are sometimes called organic shapes, and organic shapes are things that are not even. They are uneven shapes. They're, sometimes they're round, sometimes they have jagged edges. We, are human beings, are freeform shapes. Our bodies are freeform shapes. Our hands are freeform shapes. They're uneven, they have a lot of curves in them. And they're called organic shapes because a lot of things that we see in nature organic things are freeform shapes. Trees don't always have straight edges, okay? Human beings and animals, living things often don't have straight edges. We are made of a variety of edges and forms and so that's why we're called freeforms. It's free shapes that are uneven and that I'm going to show you how we're going to use them today to make our gardens. It is springtime and in honor of this season, we are going to be exploring freeform shapes to help us make some art. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, my kindergarten and first grade artists, before we begin the artwork, we have to go over a few vocabulary words. First, like I said in the intro, we're gonna be using freeform shapes. Those are shapes that are uneven, also called organic shapes or natural shapes. Human beings are freeform shapes. Animals are freeform shapes. Plants and trees, things of that nature. Clouds are all freeform shapes. We are going to be using warm colors today. Now, if you forget the, what the warm colors are, I put a little teeny tiny color wheel here and put some stars over the warm colors. We have red, orange, and yellow. Usually warm colors are used to make things look exciting or really bright, um, really active. So you can you know, think about those choices as you go along with our gardens. And I want us to use cool colors. And just as a reminder, cool colors on the other side of the color wheel, and I marked them here, they're green, blue, and purple. Cool colors usually make things look a little more calm or quiet, okay? So we're gonna be using those colors in our garden. And we're also gonna be using neutral colors, which are natural colors, sometimes called organic colors or earth tones, because we often see these colors in the earth. We see them in our skin, we see them in the ground, we see them in our hair. Neutral colors are black, brown, white, gray, and tan. So think about all the things that we see that are that are on the earth, things that grow. Um, think about our skin tones and our eye colors and our hair colors. Those all fall under the neutral color families. We talked about background last week and we're gonna be using a background again today. We talked about size, how important it is to use size when we're drawing different things. Things that are in the front, sometimes a little larger, things in the back or sometimes a little smaller, if you're ready to follow along with that type of stuff. But here's an extra word for our first grade artists, patterns. Now, kindergarten artists, you are welcome to use this vocabulary as well. And I look forward to seeing it in your artwork. But just to bump it up a notch for our first grade artists, patterns are things that are repeated over and over again. So if you worked with me last week with our self-portraits, we included patterns in our background. So hopefully you can think of some patterns that we can either add to the background or we can add to the freeform shapes that we're gonna be using for our flowers. Here's our standard VA1, and also VAK slash one CR5, demonstrating understanding of the safe and appropriate use of materials, tools, and equipment for a variety of artistic processes. We're sticking to the standard because what we're doing now is a lot of drawing, which is two dimensional. And the things that we're gonna be using, such as the materials and tools and equipment for these projects involve two dimensional media, which means we're gonna be using crayons, pencils, and markers. Okay, let's get to it. 
So remember artists, I always suggest that if you have one, start with a pencil first. But if you don't have one, use whatever you can to start drawing, okay? So I'm not gonna use a pencil this time. I'm gonna use a marker so that you can see what I'm drawing just a little better. Of course, I'm gonna put my name at the bottom. I'm gonna draw a box around it so I don't add color over it. Okay, so I'm gonna put my finger towards the bottom. This line is gonna go across the page. You may remember it from last week. It's called a horizon line. You can make it bumpy, you can make it straight. I kinda want my flowers to be growing out of some dirt and grass, I'm gonna make it bumpy. So it's up to you how you wanna do it. Make sure it goes from one side of the page to the other. The next thing I'm going to do is think about how large I want my flowers. For this assignment, I'm asking for five flowers because I want to see how many different freeform shapes you're able to use. I want to see you use warm colors and cool colors and neutral colors. So in order to assess all those things, I need a few flowers in this drawing, okay? And of course, you're the artist. You can draw your flowers however you want to. They can be realistic. That means they look like flowers you've seen before or you can just make them up in your mind. Use your imagination. I'm, I'm gonna start with some simple shapes to start my flowers. I wanna make sure I have enough space. So I'm gonna draw a circle. That's a geometric shape here. And I'm gonna draw some long curvy lines. And these are my freeform shapes that I'm using to start to draw the petals, this part of the flower. I can make them large if I want to. I can make them thin. I could draw some behind other ones. It's up to you. You're the artist. I'm gonna draw a few more here behind some more. Does yours have to look exactly like mine? Absolutely not. I'm just showing you some different ways of doing this project. So I have all these long curvy shapes. These are my free form shapes, my organic shapes. I'm going to start right here at the bottom of my flower and I'm going to draw a stem. I think I'm going to use a curvy line because this flower is still growing. I'm going to go up here and do another curvy line for my stem. And now I'm going to create some free form shapes, kind of like a football shape. For my leaves. I'll put one here, start at the stem, and go back. See? Freeform shapes, curves, okay? Then I'm going to add some lines here for my leaves. We know all about lines, so we're adding some curved lines. Moving slowly. And I think I'm going to add some texture. Something that makes the inside of my flower look a little, a little bumpy here. Represent that pollen there. So I have one flower. I'm going to go along with you for another flower. Let's see. I still have some space left. I think I'm going to make this flower, thinking about size, a little shorter and a little smaller. So I'm going to start with a geometric shape, my circle here. And I think... I'm going to make some wavy petals. This is a flower for my imagination that I'm kind of making up as I go along because I'm an artist. I can do that and you can too. And I'm adding extra curvy lines to my free form or organic shapes that I'm using for the petals of my flower. You can draw some behind. Start here. Start over here. And you want another here. Ooh, it's kind of fun, kind of funky. Boom. And I'm going to start at the bottom of my petals and add my stem. And I'm going to do another freeform shape, kind of like a football. Not quite as even this time. Kind of curve that up. Do one more. Start at the stem. 
slowly curve your line. And if you have to go back to the stem and start from there, do that. And just make sure your lines meet. Think about how you're going to draw your grass. Sometimes I like to use zigzags. Some artists like to use lots of lines like this. I want my grass in the front or the foreground too. So I'm going to continue putting it here below my horizon line or below my ground line where I started drawing my flowers. Then I'm going to add a freeform shape. What, what freeform shape is this going to be? Yep. Curvy is going to be a cloud. I'm going to have some sun peeking out from behind that. Hmm. Let's do one more together. I'm going to use kind of an oval shape for this one. Let's see what kind of freeform shape can I come up with? How about a zigzag line freeform? <laughs> this flower is going to be made of zigzags. Why? Because we're artists. We can do that. But more importantly, I want to see you try to make up some freeform shapes that, can, that you can use for your flowers, your designer flowers <laughs> in this garden. I think I'm even gonna use some zigzags for the stem, soft zigzags, huh? This is what I love about freeform shapes. You can just kinda let loose, get creative and see what happens. So, what do you think? So artists, here is my finished drawing of my flower garden. I have my five flowers as I detailed in the assignment. And for my kindergartners, I used a variety. That's mean a lot of different freeform shapes. Those are shapes, so those are shapes that are uneven, often round. I have some pretty cool and different freeform shapes here. I have some thin ones, I have some wider ones. I use all the different types of lines that I know curve lines, straight lines, zigzag lines, swirls, in order to make my freeform shapes. So I want you to try those. And for my first grade artists and my kindergartners, they really want to try to do a little extra. Don't forget to try to explore pattern and see where you can add different patterns. Maybe somewhere in your flower petals. It could be anywhere in your garden. It's up to you. Now remember, this is just the first week of this assignment, so I'm not adding color or any tones to it yet, but if you're ready to do that, feel free. The second part of our video, we'll talk about the different ways that we're gonna be adding the color families that we talked about. Warm colors, cool colors, and neutrals, okay? So, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for continuing to be so creative. Thank you for all your likes and subscribes. Please know that I appreciate it. And to all my artists, I hope that you are well. I hope that you're being nice to people. Same rules in our classroom. Be nice, practice self-control, and help the people around you help take care of each other. Until next time, this is Mrs. P. Know that I love you and miss you, and I cannot wait to hear from you and see your artwork. See you soon, and stay creative.